So today, we're going to be preparing some substrates. Um, in front of me, I've got some some rough hemp, some hemp which has got uh, bigger particles, some vermiculite, some finer hemp, so that's just hemp that's uh, chopped finer, with some fibers, some straw, and some coffee peels, which is the skin of the coffee grains. Now you can use anything um, that you find at home, straw, sawdust, coffee grains, um, cocoa core, hemp fibers, basically anything that's cellulose based. From our experience, like the, the stronger the, the, the substrate, for example with hemp or, or wood chips, the stronger the final outcome of the product is going to be. So, it's very important when making your substrate mixes, especially if you want to get quite experimental, to measure everything out, okay? So, I'm going to be making one bag of substrate mix. Okay, now because I have a bit of experience, I know more or less the quantity and the ratios of materials that I want. So now I'm going to add my 50 grams of rough hemp. Now, in the same way as we did the agar, it's important to have one bowl for measuring and one bowl for mixing. So here I've got 50 grams, I'm going to add it to my mixing bowl. I'm now going to add the coffee peels. And let's get up to 10 grams of coffee peels. We're gonna add a little bit of straw just for a bit more flexibility um, and reinforcement. So here I'm adding six grams. And for this particular substrate, I'm gonna add uh, three grams of finer hemp. Oh, okay, that was a little bit too much. See, this is why we always have one bowl for measuring and one bowl for mixing. Okay, great, so I'm gonna add that to the mixing bowl. And finally, I'm gonna add some vermiculite. Now, vermiculite is non-nutritious, um, but it does hold humidity so that can keep the, the substrate nice and moist for you. And it's also very lightweight. So if you wanna have a, a lighter substrate and that needs to take on a lot more volume, you can add a lot more vermiculite. Okay, so I'm just gonna add 10 grams to my substrate mix. And here we go all the ingredients together, nice and dry, and I'm gonna mix them all up. This part is a little bit dusty, it's a little bit messy, but this also depends on the type of substrates that you're using. I have found in the past when using things which are more grainy, for example, coffee or um, sawdust, really fine sawdust, the material at the end, it tends to be quite flaky, so it doesn't actually hold um, as well together. So you want to have something that's quite fibrous uh, and quite strong, and which is why, to be honest, the best material that we've come across so far has been hemp husks. Um, and it's a very strong material, it's a waste material from the, the marijuana industry. Um, so it really is a great material to use for when making microcomposites. Okay, so now you can see our substrates are nice and mixed together. And now we have to add the water. Okay, so next to me I've got 200 ml of distilled water. I'm just going to slowly add that in. So I'm just going to add 100 ml to start. So we've got roughly 200 grams of dry weight material here. So I'm just going to add 100 mill of water just to start off with now we're going to begin mixing the material 
really massaging the water and you kind of want to get it so that it's not dusty anymore. Oh, I know, I'm making a mess. Oopsies. Fortunately, at this stage of the process, it doesn't really matter if, um, if you're not wearing gloves, if you're not wearing a mask, if you're not wearing your PPE, because we're going to be sterilizing or, auto or pasteurizing the substrates afterwards. Okay, so like, as you can see, my material is now pretty much covered in some moisture nice and massaged see notice how I only added 100 mil to start with and now I have the opportunity to add a little bit more if I feel that it's not enough okay so I would say normally depending on the substrates that you're using half the um, milliliters of water to grams of um, material dry material dry weight material I'm just going to add roughly 50 mil more to this substrate. I think if I added the 100, it would be just a little bit too moist. And we want to avoid having our substrates too moist because that is a higher risk of contamination. We don't want to have like too much moisture sitting in the bottom of our bags. And we want to kind of give the, the material um, or the mycelium, the best conditions for growth. Okay, so as you can see, the, the material itself or the substrate has is just about at field capacity, so it's not there's no drips coming out. I'd say that that is pretty perfect. It's kind of a little bit sticky. You really get a feel for this. Um, the more you do it. And remember, as with everything, make sure you document how much material you're adding with each ingredient and how much water you're adding. Because if you do this one time and you find that actually the substrate is too moist once it's grown, then you know that for the next time you do this iteration that you need to add a little bit less water. Or if you feel that maybe you want the material to be a little bit more lightweight, you can add more vermiculite, or if you need more um, structural reinforcement, then you can add more hemp. So really, this is a very experimental stage, um, and you can you can adapt your substrate according to the results of your uh, final pieces, or even the growth of the substrate bag. So, say that your substrate bag doesn't grow as expected that could be something to do with the water content or it could be something to do with like the lack of nutrition or the lack of um, air holes for the mycelium to grow through uniformly remember the more compact the more small particles that you use as a substrate the harder it is for the mycelium to kind of grow through it so for example when using coffee grains if it's too di too densely compact it might be harder to get uniform growth throughout. So all things to consider when designing a substrate mix. Right, that is now uh, ready to be put into the mushroom bag for the filter patch bag. So you want to fill these up roughly to three quarters of the way actually the perfect amount okay you want that you don't want the bags to be too full this is where the mycelium breathes through so you need to make sure that that's not covered um, I'd say that's a pretty good amount of material to be adding now remember what we're going to be doing once this is once this is sterilized is we're going to be adding either myceliated agar myceliated grains or liquid culture to these substrate bags so now, time to pressure cook, or time to autoclave, or time to sterilize, <laughs> or to pasteurize.